second phase of rescue efforts in Thailand are underway as we speak. With some success, Lori, a mm -hmm. fifth boy was freed from the cave this morning. Yeah, and this follows the four boys who were rescued over the weekend. Right now, seven teens, though, and their 25-year-old coach, they remain trapped in a cave. Fox 5's Liz Dahlem is in the newsroom with the latest for us, Liz. Good morning to you, Lori and Rosanna. And that fifth boy who was freed from the cave just moments ago is said to be on his way to the hospital. We have some video, an ambulance racing by a crowded street outside of that hospital. Many gathering to witness this with their own eyes. Again, presumably that fifth boy inside that ambulance just there. And we've learned the same diving team that successfully rescued several of the boys yesterday has been back into that flooded cave today because they know the conditions and know what to do, according to Thailand's interior minister. Seven boys ranging in ages from 11 to 16, along with their 25-year-old soccer coach, remain trapped after being found alive last Monday, 10 days after they went missing. The escape route is very tricky, though. Some parts are too narrow for scuba tanks, while others require climbing gear and depleted oxygen along with strong currents. Water depths up to 90 feet and sharp crevices of rock are making this extremely difficult. The boys are being tethered to rescue divers, one in front and one behind each of them. Now, four other boys were rescued yesterday and an entire floor of the hospital has been reserved strictly for them. Again, that fifth boy on his way there now. Doctors and nurses dedicated to treating them and them only. Lori and Rosanna, over to you. All right, Liz, thank you. Well, well, for some perspective on what those divers are actually going through and how they're training the children to dive, mm -hmm. uh, we're joined by Sandra Klopp. All right, Sandra, you've been uh, on many cave dives all over the world. Thailand, too? I've been cave diving in the Philippines, Australia, Mexico, and Florida. All right, so the first question I have, these kids don't even know how to swim, let alone use scuba gear. How are they training them in a matter of hours to get out of there. At the very least, they would have to teach them how to equalize the airspace, and they would have to teach them how to clear a full face mask, which they're putting the boys on. In All case right, I don't scuba, so give me a little bit more, like, simpler understanding. Okay. Okay. So this, this has this normal scuba rig on. It's probably on a long hose so the boys can reach it. Okay. And it covers the whole face. Mm -hmm. But if you get a little bit of water leaking in here, there's a way to clear it. And the boys would have to be taught how to stay calm if the water touched their nose and made them uncomfortable, how to clear a mask. If they panic, they can't go straight up. They still have what to swim. What happens if they swim. panic? The natural human reaction is to go up when you panic. Right, you can't do that? Go. They cannot do that. If the boys get trapped in the guideline, then they have to stay calm while the rescuers cut them out with a, with a knife. Oh, gee. And I heard a lot of that area is very dark. You can't see, not even right in front of you. Terrible visibility. Mm -hmm. And if they stir up silt, it could go from however short visibility it is to nothing. So what's the communication like I mean, with the rescuers and the, the young kids as they're navigating these jagged, narrow tunnels? So in low visibility, they're definitely going to have one hand on a guideline and the other hand would be on the boy. Wow. And you would have to think, I mean, first of all, as Rosanna said, we know they're weak. Their pulmonary function may not right. be what it is. And then you have to take into account their mental condition as well. Right. Trying to do, it's a lot. It's a lot. That's being asked of these children. And by the way, of the rescuers as well. The boys are young, so hopefully they're fearless mm -hmm. and they're trusting of the rescuers, so they might be a bit calmer than an adult would be. So let's talk about that. That cave length is what, at least a mile and a half long? It's long. Somebody said it takes anywhere from four to six hours to get each way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then, and then I hear that there are two divers for every boy, so this is helpful to get them through the cave because there's some climbing involved too it's not just swimming right i've heard it's there's some parts where they have to do some caving on land as well and they need equipment for that too wow what knowing that you've been in this type of scenario before at least rescue efforts and diving what amount of pressure is on the rescuers mm. to get these children out safe and sound it has to be flawless they have to keep the boys calm and they, ha they can't lose the guideline. But do you internally feel like 
I'm a failure if I don't make this mission, or, I mean, you have to, in your, in your own head, be thinking, I've got to get these people out. I think the rescuers have one mission, that's to get the boys out. That's the only thing going through their minds. They already know what they're doing. They're all very qualified. Mm -hmm. And they just need to know, they need to do what they know how to do. Well, we all already know how dangerous a mission this is. One of the Thai Navy SEALs died with, in, in this rescue operation, mm -hmm. didn't have, I guess, enough oxygen. How do, they, how do they know if they have enough, enough oxygen in the tank when they're making this initial dive? They would have a pressure gauge on their tank. And okay. that, they, you go in using only a third of your air and then you turn around and you should be exiting with a third. And that would allow for any emergencies like getting caught in a reel, having to cut it and retie it. So I don't know the details as to whether he broke rule of thirds or if he got entangled somehow and he didn't have enough, enough time. Mm -hmm. And of course we've heard that time really is the biggest thing here. The lack of oxygen there, um, as they don't have the nutrition that they should be getting, that the clock is really working against them. It is. In this kind of scenario. Sandra Clock, right, thank Sandra, you. So thank you, you are the owner of Urban Mantis Scuba Lessons, yeah. Gear and Trips. And yeah. are you based here? I'm in based New in New York City and I take students all over the world. Wow. All right, we thank appreciate you. your perspective and expertise. Thanks. Thank you.